Chapter 1. A Letter Several letters arrived at the Elms one autumn morning. One of them was for Mrs. Gray. It read, My dear sister and brother, thank you very much for your kind offer to take care of George and Fanny while we are away. We gratefully accept. It will be an overwhelming comfort to know that our dear children are safe and well cared for while we are so far away. However, it is only fair to tell you that we fear your nephew and niece might not behave as well as you expect them to. It is not easy for parents to talk about their children's imperfections. We know that both George and Fanny have many good qualities. They are honest, loving, and usually obedient. We think they are intelligent for their age. I am sorry to add that Fanny sometimes loses her temper. The slightest misunderstanding easily offends her. I'm afraid her brother tends to be proud and arrogant, especially towards those whom he thinks are inferior to him. This has definitely caused us quite a few problems. I am afraid that these bad tendencies will give you some trouble. Temper and pride, said Mr. Gray seriously, after he and his wife had read this part of the letter. We shall have a serious matter on our hands. On our hearts, too added Mrs. Gray. I suppose so, Rachel. It will be on our hearts, too, said her husband. Perhaps my sister has exaggerated her children's faults, Rachel suggested hopefully. That's not very likely, replied Mr. Gray. Parents don't usually do that. Besides, both temper and pride are so common in human hearts, it shouldn't surprise us to find them there. We don't need to cross the bridge before we come to it, Rachel. We will find out soon enough what these children are really like. The first thing we must think about is your journey to London. When do you plan to go? Well, Sister Martha is going to set sail early next week. I had better leave the day after tomorrow, said Mrs. Gray. Why don't you go tomorrow, Rachel? You and your sister will have a lot to talk about. It will be a long time before you see each other again. Perhaps we will never see one another again, James, said Mrs. Gray, with a sigh and a tear. I hope you will, my dear, answered the husband. Let's hope that a few months in a warmer climate will restore Mr. Franklin's health. Now, without continuing this conversation any further, it might be a good idea to explain who the speakers were and what they were talking about. Mr. Gray was a wealthy farmer. He had a large farm and lived in a beautiful house. He had a reputation for being an excellent employer, and he was well educated. Though he did not socialize much or have a lot of friends, those who knew him respected him very much. Mrs. Gray was a kind, gentle, and intelligent lady. She was also well respected. Like her husband, she delighted in doing good things for everyone around her. Mr. and Mrs. Gray were happy because they made themselves useful. They served others the way all Christians should, but they also had their trials. God tries the faith and patience of those who love him in many different ways. We can be sure that when he does this, it is for their benefit. That they may be partakers of his holiness. Hebrews 12.10 when they are in trouble, their heavenly Father has compassion on them and gives them the strength to bear their heaviest burdens. Comforts their souls so they can say, It is good for us that we have been afflicted. Psalms 119.71 Mr. and Mrs. Gray's sorrows and troubles had nothing to do with money. The farmer had never had any large losses in his business. He was a prosperous man, and neither he nor his wife wanted any more wealth than they already had. They believed that great wealth led to great temptations. They wanted to put what they already owned to good use. They used it to serve God and help their fellow man, rather than trying to get more. There are other sorrows in life besides those that have to do with poverty and money losses. The Greys had experienced them. They lost several children. Two of them died while they were only babies, 
and another little girl died when she was five years old. One beloved son was their comfort and hope. At fifteen years old, his life was suddenly ended by a sad accident. Now the farmer and his wife were middle-aged. Not one of their sons or daughters was still alive. Young reader, can you imagine how very sad they must have been? They did not criticize God. During all these losses, he helped them submit to his sovereign will. They could say, as Job did when his children all died, The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job 1.21 Some people wondered how Mr. and Mrs. Gray could be so happy after they had suffered so much. The reason for their peace and joy was really no secret. It had been very hard for them to lose every one of their children. Because they were Christians, they had a strong faith. They believed in God's wisdom and kindness. When they cast their burdens upon him, he gave them strength and gave them victory over sorrow through the Lord Jesus Christ. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Psalms 55, 22 Now another trouble had come, and it was threatening them like a dark, distant cloud. Mrs. Gray had a very dear sister, Martha, who was a lot younger than she. This sister lived in London. Her name was Mrs. Franklin. Her husband was wealthier than the Greys, but he had been terribly sick for a long time. The doctors were afraid that he would never recover. They said that there was nothing more they could do to help him. If he travelled abroad and visited a country with a warmer climate than England's, his health and strength might come back. The Franklins quickly packed their bags and prepared to travel. It wasn't a good idea for the children to go with their parents, so the Greys kindly and willingly offered to take care of them. Since I have explained all this, the reader should now be able to understand the letter at the beginning of this chapter. The reader should also understand the little bit of conversation which followed. Arrangements were being made for Mrs. Gray to leave home the next morning to say goodbye to her sister. The next week, when she came home, she was going to bring her nephew and niece, George and Fanny Franklin, with her.